Uh, I am uh, fortunate enough to be the director of the Ruminant Farm Systems Modeling Project. I am uh, not, however, the lead on the manure module part. Um, uh, Varma Sampali, who um, recently moved on to manage a wastewater treatment plant, is the postdoc that is really the the brains and the, the engine behind the work that I'm going to show you. Um, uh, Loi Pham is our uh, software engineer that, that did most of the coding that made this possible. And Dr. Greg Toma, who moved from University of Arkansas to Colorado State, um, was uh, supervising Varma in, in his work. So I'll do my best to, to capture their work as well as to share um, a high level of what the Rufus project is about. So, um, just the, the cliff notes of, of what RUFUS is. Um, so RUFUS stands for Ruminant Farm Systems Model, and we are building this model in a way that is designed for it to be a, really a, a next, gen next generation whole farm model that uh, it predicts the key outcomes needed to um, inform sustainable management decisions. Uh, and what we mean by next generation is that it is um, adhering to uh, state-of-the-art practices for uh, coding uh, transparency, structure, and clarity. Um, and uh, we have also uh, an ambitious goal for it to be used for a variety of applications. Uh, so that means everything from, well, not everything, but uh, the range from uh, use as a tool to in, in um, that can be used to advance our, our knowledge, scientific knowledge and understanding of the system to a more practical applications of how can it support and inform management decisions. Um, on its surface, uh, Rufus is similar to many other whole farm models or decision support tools. It takes a, a set of inputs uh, that define the management practices, including uh, the weather and, and soil, if you're interested in the crop and soil module. It simulates the outcomes and what we refer to as the biophysical uh, part of the model. And the, the approach that we've taken is a process-based based approach that uh, simulates on a daily time step, meaning it is predicting nutrient uh, transformations and transfers between the parts of the farm and losses on a, on a daily basis. And then, of course, if we're simulating all of those things on a daily basis, we're producing lots of data. And so we have to summarize it in a meaningful way that can be used at a variety of different scales. And I uh, hopefully at some point in the future be uh, interoperable with other decision support software. Um, so that is summarized in our Rufus mission statement, which is to build an integrated whole farm model that simulates sustainability outcomes and strives for the highest standards for prediction accuracy, code structure, documentation, and accessibility. And we uh, have an approach of, of continuous learning and improvement um, with a creative and uh, with a, an open and inclusive platform. Um, and so, as I, I alluded to before, we have a, a large team, and these are kind of the figureheads of the teams in each of these locations um, that include uh, collaborations across uh, universities, inclu but including also uh, several different USDA ARS locations, uh, nonprofits, and industry partners. So probably what you are all mo most interested in is in the manure module. Uh, and so we are working towards completion of the first version of our uh, manure module. And so these are the a high level description of the manure management practices that are, are included in the manure module, or rather uh, this the complete list is what we have committed to including. And the reason for this open box here at the bottom is that we haven't yet finished representation of, of composting uh, as a storage method. And so um, we can collect manure from uh, the animal module, and I'll say a little bit more about that later, um, as well as uh, transfer the, the manure after it's been through the management processes to the soil and crop module for application in the fields. 
Um, as you all know, bedding is really important in terms of what happens uh, to the manure. So we have uh, several different bedding types, including um, ones that come to mind are sand, sawdust, and, and manure solids. Uh, manure can be cleaned by scraping or flushing. It can be separated, uh, solid liquid separation. Uh, under uh, we have uh, two presets for rotary screens and um, uh, screw presses, but uh, you can also define your separation efficiency as as you like. Um, we have anaerobic digestion as one uh, um, treatment manure treatment type uh, that's of of interest right now, as well as different long term storage options uh, depending on the uh, uh, solid or liquid state. Um, and then we also have compost bedded back pack barns and open lots that are come somewhere in between that animal management and um, uh, manure management strategies. Um, so those are previously shared the management practices we have, but of course the outcomes, what we're predicting uh, happens under those different management strategies are just as important. And so um, from each of the steps in the manure management process, um, we're relevant. We are predicting nitrous oxide, ammonia, and methane emissions, and then uh, tracking the manure composition and mass uh, throughout the entire uh, management system, as well as the water use. Energy use, we are uh, finalizing our methods to uh, quantify the, the different types and amounts of energy uh, needed for to support each of these different management practices, but it's not yet uh, programmed in the model um, on, on our list of, of milestones for the end of this year. So here's uh, just a, a more graphical way to represent those management practices and also to emphasize the modularity that we have with this um, um, uh, within the Rufus model. So the, the animal module uh, passes manure with these, this set of characteristics to the manure module. Um, and then it, it, it enters a pathway of manure management options where um, each manure management strategy is defined by one set of uh, options within each of these boxes. So we have manure handlers um, that de determine uh, the, the cleaning, bedding, and distribution of manure. Um, optional, uh, optional option for a reception pit. The user can either have or not have a reception pit. Uh, and then, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, manure separators that are uh, flexibly defined. I, I forgot the um, uh, sand lane option, of course. And uh, then so the storage and treatment, um, we have, as I mentioned, kind of a variety of options. And even though some of these um, in practice might not be thought of as storage or treatment options within the context of our um coded modular system, um, they fall under the storage or treatment options. Um, and then of course, the manure with the same set of properties is then passed to the crop and soil module. And then, um, so as I mentioned, a manure management strategy is defined by uh, uh, one of the set of those um, uh, one of the options from each of those um, bins earlier. And so that if you define this manure management strategy, you can assign it to uh, a pen of animals and you can either have multiple manure management strategies um, assigned to diff um, multiple different pens, or you could just have one manure management strategy and assign it to all of the different pens. And so here's some examples of, of our, our outputs. Um, in order to track the, the total volume and, and, and uh, mass of different nutrients, we combine the, the water and manure from different sources. So this is just an example um, from one single pen. But if you were managing manure from multiple pens, in the same way, they would be summed just like we're summing here the total manure volume from the water volume uh, from the milking parlor. Um, and those are then passed to um, the handler. And then uh, 
uh, going through after being separated, there is um, some loss of volume from the solids. Uh, just examples how we're tracking that those um, masses throughout the entire system. Um, and then um, as examples of, of outputs uh, of the emissions on a daily basis, you, you can see here um, the graph on the left has the, the temperatures that are would be an in, in input to the model and then the uh, relevant uh, methane and ammonia emissions from uh, the housing system. So this would just be the first stage in the uh, manure management system. Um, then moving down the, the, the system, we have uh, like similarly storage and ammonia emissions coming from uh, long-term storage. Uh, and I think this was from a, an anaerobic lagoon. And you can see that these um, similarly respond to temperature fluctuations uh, as expected. As I mentioned earlier, the um, solid-liquid separation methods are... Um, uh, customizable. And so uh, the default settings for these uh, different types of separators can be used by just um, selecting from a drop down menu. But uh, the user is also welcome to provide their, uh, their own separation efficiencies, both for total solids, but also on a, a nutrient basis in case they have a, a different type of system that they are interested in. Uh, uh, maybe potentially a more novel or, or advanced um, nutrient separation technology that we don't have a process-based representation of yet. And so here's another example of the um, out outcomes from a different type of man uh, manure storage system, uh, manure management system, really. So the compost bedded pack, um, we don't see the response uh, responses to uh, the fluctuations in environmental uh, temperature as we as we do uh, in the um, uh, in the outdoor storage. Uh, lagoon, uh, because in, in the barn, we're still going to be um, losing uh, quite a lot or maintaining a, a higher level of temperature and um, still losing quite a bit of ammonia and nitrous oxide in those systems. Open lots. I am not 100% sure what my, don't remember what my take home message was here. Um, just that, you know, an example of the emissions from uh, an open lot system. Uh, and then the um, last kind of outcomes, and I see my time is up, but I've just got a couple more slides. The last outcomes that we have represented are, are the flexibility in terms of how we are passing the manure to the crop and field system. So to just um, to illustrate that this um transfer of nutrients is flexible and can be done um, on uh, a schedule that a user defines um, is that these um, you can see the the nutrient amount being the the total amount of these nutrients in the manure storage system increasing um, uh, on a daily basis until it is um, some amount is requested and it can be variable amounts that are requested uh, based on the needs of the field management practices and on uh, different time steps. So 30 days here and every six months on the bottom. Um, so to, to just summarize how we envision Rufus being used, we recognize that, that the flexibility and complexity in the model um, requires a lot of inputs. And so we're working now to kind of reduce that burden on the, the input specification and uh, find ways to make it more accessible and usable um, for our, our stakeholders. Um, and uh, one of those ways has been to develop this data collection app, which is a, a user interface so you can point and click um, and use drop down menus to, to, to provide those inputs, um, as well as a detailed documentation about uh, how to use that information so that you, not everyone that uses the model has to use a, um, a, a JSON script like the one shown here, which is how, what we're using now. 
Here's just an example of a page from that data collection app where we're defining uh, a pen and then uh, this manure management scenario ID here, number six is going to the uh, manure management scenario number six and defining the bedding types, handling, separation, etc. cetera. Um, so our, our timeline, um, you know, we started this process back in 2017. Uh, we have um, had uh, a lot of made a lot of progress in that time. Um, we ha have initiated last year our commitment to be the the engine behind the Farm ES tool, which is a national footprinting tool. Um, this year, there were two USDA ARS positions that um, were announced, and so they're in the process of hiring those those scientists now and looking forward to having that stable commitment and participation in the team and planning to release our version one. Um, so oops, let me get rid of my animations. Um, so next year, first quarter, hoping to release our, our open source code base. Um, which would be our first version one. And then, as I mentioned, uh, Farm ES will be released in July of 2024. We'll establish a Rufus consortium that we think will help um, us engage with our industry stakeholders and, and meet their needs a little bit more. We'll also provide a means to have some stable fundraising. Um, and then 2025, looking at building a more um, integrated user interface that will um, make the model even more accessible. Um, so and then in our short term, um, we definitely want to finish adding those, those functional requirements that we uh, have committed to for our version one, including in the manure system, uh, composting, for example, uh, and then um, working on simulating different manure management scenarios and, and um, doing some more rigorous evaluation of those outcomes, including a sensitivity analysis. Um, so with that, um, I'd like to thank you for your attention.